Entrepreneurship is a journey and one of the hardest jobs in the world. That's why if you want to be a successful entrepreneur, you must master the art of organization, productivity, and time management to keep you motivated. This is where the organized entrepreneur comes in. With the organized entrepreneur, you get the right tips, the right tools, and the right resources to help you simplify your life so that you can organize your business with ease. So we're concluding our stewardship series with the final installment on the three T's of stewardship, and that is time, talent, and treasures. And so what we have discovered so far is that um, regarding the biblical doctrine of stewardship is that it's about our relationship to God and our practical obedience in the administration of everything that's been entrusted to us. And so, to, and so today we'll be covering the third T of stewardship, and that is treasure. And so today's topic is stewarding your treasures. So what are treasures? Okay, let's just start there. In the Old Testament, the Hebrew word most often translated treasure is atsar, and that's O-T-S-A-R. And also in the Old Testament, the, the, there's the art, the Old Testament, there are at least, excuse me, there are at least five distinct meanings, okay? And so one, I'm going to give those, I'm going to give those to you, and then we'll move into the rest of it, okay? But I felt like this was important for us to understand this whole background of treasures, because sometimes we have, you know, like, not a, not the full spectrum of what the meaning of the words are. And so wanted to give you that, right? So in the Old Testament, there are at least five distinct meanings, okay? Treasure and the uh, aromatic, and I am not pronounced that, pronouncing that correctly. Anyway, genaz, that's spelled G- G-E-N-A-Z, and then G-E-N-E-Z is the Hebrew word for treasure. So we've got those two meanings, right? And this usually means the thing stored, right? So treasure is the thing stored, okay? Then there is the storehouse, not the thing that's stored, but the place of storage, okay? Like a depository, a um, a cellar, you know, those types of things. Then there is hidden riches, right? Treasure means hidden riches or something that's concealed. And then there's strength, the strength of riches and treasure. Uh, the Hebrew word there is, and I cannot pronounce this, but it's spelled C-H-O-C-E-N, from the root meaning to hoard or lay up, okay? And then um, the last one, number five, is meaning means something prepared, made ready, right? Um, and so those are the five places in the Old Testament that treasure has, you know, different distinct meanings, okay? And so in the New Testament, the word Gaza is from the Persian origin, meaning treasure. But then there is the word thesaurus, right, meaning a deposit, wealth, treasure. And throughout the New Testament, it has a twofold usage, right, describing material treasure, and spiritual treasure, right? Material treasure, like money or valuable material possessions. Can't talk today. And then there's spiritual treasure, like, uh, you know, the good treasure of the heart that's uh, talked about in Matthew. All right. So I believe you you got the idea, okay? So we're talking about stewardship of your treasure. So how do we steward treasures? And I believe that the Bible is clear on how to steward our treasures. In fact, Matthew 6 and 19 gives gives us a clear perspective. It says, do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth where moths and vermin destroy, where thieves break in and steal. 
but store up yourselves for yourselves treasures in heaven where moths and vermin do not destroy and where thieves do not break in and steal. And then verse 21 says, for where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Wow. So when we treasure, what we treasure is determined by our perspective. That's why it's important to have a clear perspective about stewardship and what we treasure. Because, again, what we treasure is determined by our perspective and our insight. Right, And that's why it's saying, don't lay up treasures on earth, but lay up treasures in heaven. And this is, and we'll, we'll get into a little bit more of this shortly, but understanding and having a clear perspective about treasures, meaning we must know and understand that all we have, all we are, our talents, our time, treasures, are all things that's entrusted to us. He's invested in us. And guess what? He will want a return on his investment. So going back to that scripture, this is not something that we should be trying to store here on earth (laughs) because we have to have a heavenly perspective. And so as stewards, we have a responsibility to actively put what we have been given to work and multiply it. So the things that we have been given in terms of our talents, our time, and our treasures, we have a responsibility to put that to work. We are to invest because he's invested in us. And so one of the most common or uh, familiar scriptures, you know, is in Luke 19, 11 through 26, where Jesus shared a parable. I would encourage you to go and read that. We're not going to cover that uh, on the call right now. But when we live sacrificially for Christ's sake, we serve him by serving the body of Christ. And that is how we store up treasure in heaven. So not only, you know, when, it's, when he's saying here, do not store up for ourselves treasure here on earth to store it up in heaven, one of the ways is by living sacrificially for the sake of Christ, by serving him when we serve the body of Christ. That's how we are storing up treasures in heaven because everything counts toward our reward, right? And I, I really hope, because I was so excited about this, so I really hope I'm, I'm making this clear. But anyway, um, when we live sacrificially for, for Christ's sake and we serve him by serving the body of Christ, We are storing up treasure in heaven. And everything counts toward our reward, right? Even the seemingly small acts of service do not go unnoticed. In Matthew 10, 42, it says, if anyone gives even a cup of cold water to one of these little ones who is my disciple, truly I tell you, that person will certainly not lose their reward, right? So everything is about having a heavenly perspective about when it comes to the treasures and the rewards. Those of us who are on the call who are believers should have a heavenly perspective because our treasures on earth are temporary. Our treasures on earth are not fulfilling. Our treasures on earth cannot prolong our life or give us any kind of security, right? But the treasures in heaven are permanent. 
the treasures that's waiting for the child of God will far outweigh any trouble, any inconvenience, any per- perse- uh, persecution, any challenge that we may face. Romans 8 and 18 says, I consider that our present sufferings are not worth comparing with the glory that will be revealed to us. So we are not to lay up treasures here on earth because we have a heavenly reward, right? We are to lay up the treasures in heaven. It's an investment, okay? So what are those heavenly treasures that I'm talking about, right? Well, they consist of crowns, rewards, and responsibilities that's going to be given to the believers at the judgment seat of Christ for faithful stewardship. Oh, my gosh. Remember we talked about the, the R's in um, stewardship. We talked about the fact that there will be rewards that await the believers who serve the Lord faithfully. It says a great reward is promised to those who are persecuted for Christ's sake. And Jesus says, here's, here's the cool part. He will bring rewards with him when he returns. Go look at Revelation 22 and 12. His reward will be abundantly gracious. 1 Corinthians 15 and 58 says, always give yourselves fully to the work of the Lord, because you know that your labor is not in vain. Your labor in the Lord is not in vain. So he's going to be rewarding us graciously. He has an eternal reward for those who are motivated to serve Christ. Those believers, those of you that's on the call, you're motivated to serve Christ, knowing that there is a reward at the end of it, knowing that your work is not in vain, right? And so Colossians 3 and 23 and 24 says, whatever you do, work at it with all your heart as working for the Lord, not for human masters, since you know that you will receive an inheritance from the Lord as a reward. Oh, oh my goodness. So our treasures determine our pursuits. That's the other thing I wanted to say. Our treasures determine our pursuits and our priorities. So whatever we value, we pursue those things. We prioritize those things. And when we don't have the right perspective about the treasures and the things we are to pursue, we will pursue the wrong things and waste time and effort and, and energy right? And so, oh, man, I'm telling you, I'm just so, let me just, let me just move on because I'm really excited about this because I never really had a grasp on what that looked like, what, what that meant when it said we are not to store treasures or lay up treasures here on earth because there's a reward. And sometimes, sometimes you know, we, we may think that, you know, that sounds selfish or it sounds like, okay, well, I'm just going to work, you know, work unto the Lord because I know that there's a reward in heaven. There's nothing wrong with that perspective, right? Because the scripture is saying that there is a reward, but we have to have the right perspective in terms of our pursuit and in terms of what we prioritize, Right? And when that perspective is cloudy, when we are not focused on the heavenly reward, we're going to pursue the wrong things and we're going to waste time. Oh, my gosh. I know I keep sighing, but it's a good sign, okay? So remember in Matthew 19, verses 16 through 30, I'm not going to read the whole thing, but we see an instance of the rich young man who loved his money more than he loved God. Jesus told him to sell his possessions, right? You, you all remember the story, and give to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. 
and then come and follow me. That's verse 21, right? But he chose the world's treasure. Therefore, he did not lay up treasures in heaven and was unwilling to make Jesus his treasure. He had a very he was very religious with a heart of greed, and Jesus exposed exposed that because the issue wasn't that he was rich. There's nothing wrong with that. It was what he treasured. He treasured his riches more than he treasured what he could have in Christ. And so we have a responsibility, right? And so we have a responsibility to remain focused. We have a responsibility to stay in the word, right? We have a responsibility to get a clear perspective, a heavenly perspective about the biblical principles of stewardship, knowing how to be good stewards of our time and our talent and our treasures that's given to us, that's been entrusted to us, staying grounded by keeping our focus on heaven while functioning here in the earth realm. The treasures that await the child of God will far outweigh any trouble. I just said that, but I had to say it again. Any challenge, any inconvenience, any persecution that we may face, right, when we serve the Lord wholeheartedly, knowing that his reward will be abundantly gracious, 